Hello, in this presentation, we will record an adjusting entry for accrued interest within two QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been continuing along with us, we will be continuing with Get Great Guitars Problem. If not, that is okay. We will be doing an adjusting entry for accrued interest and show how to record that adjusting entry both with a journal entry, but then we're actually going to do it without the need for debits and credits. We currently, if you have the backup file, you could restore the backup file by going to File, Open and Restore, bringing us to this point in time so that we can record the accrued interest. If not, then you can work through the problem and or uh, watch uh, what we're doing here and follow along for this example. We have the current windows open. In order to open the current windows, go to View, Open Windows List. We also have the Home tab open that found at the company drop down and the home tab what we will be doing is recording the accrued interest in order to do that we're going to first look at the balance sheet to see what accrued interest is and why it would need to be recorded to do that let's go to the reports drop down up top we're going to go to company and financial and then scroll down to the balance sheet standard we're going to change the dates by going to the customized report up at the top and we're going to change that date to 010121, January 1st, 2021, to 022821, February 28th being the month uh, end we will be looking at. We're going to say OK. Here is our balance sheet. Now, last time we saw that we had a loan payable on the books with a current portion of uh, 18109 and a long-term portion of 56769 what we need to do now is figure out how much of that has been interest how much interest has accrued on these loans that have not yet been paid as of the end of the month this is a type of journal entry that we would do if presenting the financial statements and or wanting to interpret the financial statements at a specific point in time not something that we're going to do as we go typically we're not typically going to uh, record the adjustment for the amount of interest owed because we'd have to do that daily so this is one of those adjusting entries we'd have to do at the end of the month or the end of the year in order to get a real picture of what we owe at that point in time so in order to get an idea of that we're going to look at the amortization tables related to these loans here is the amortization table we have a long-term loan over here and we have a short-term loan now the long-term loan we made the second payment as of the end of the month we are in essence paid up on that loan meaning no interest has accrued because we made that second payment as of the end of the time period so we're okay there we're going to go to the short-term loan and on the short-term loan we're going to pay all of it at the end of the loan payment so we're going to owe five thousand one fifty two at the end after borrowing five thousand it then having interest at six percent which will accumulate up to that 5,152. And we, we took the loan out. This loan, we recorded it actually at the end of the month, but we're gonna say that this loan was as of the beginning of the month, and therefore we're gonna have one month worth of payments that we have not yet paid to give an example of the accrued interest, meaning after one month, we're gonna owe interest of $25. Now, obviously, this loan is not a, a large amount of a loan. So the 25 may seem ex and not significant, and it may be not significant here. But the principal would be significant if the loan was larger and or when we get to a year's worth of interest, uh, if we haven't accrued it, this could be a significant portion. So what we're going to say here is that uh, we, have, we owe this payment or we owe uh, the 5152 at the end of the time period, and this interest is accruing as we go. And we're going to assume here that one month has happened and we then have earned rent on the money, $25, that has not yet been paid. And therefore, we are going to have to accrue this $25, meaning we're going to have a payable for it and we're going to recognize the interest expense for it. So in essence, we're going to have interest expense increasing and we're going to have a liability increasing. So if we go back to our financials then, we have a long-term payable, note, note payable, and we have the short-term portion of the notes payable, 
what we want to do is not put that added interest into the notes payable but create another account and we're going to call it it could be called accrued interest we're going to call it interest payable however we're just going to call it interest payable and we're going to have that in the current portion of our uh, liability our current liabilities portion of our balance sheet representing the fact that we owe interest on um, the loan that has been outstanding up till this point so in order to do that we could do that by going to the company and going to the make journal entries company make journal entries and then debiting the account for interest expense and crediting the account for uh, interest payable but we're going to do this without debits and credits so what we're going to do we are going to use a register so the registers are going to be in the banking section and then we go to register here and we're going to look for a register we're going to look for one of those two accounts with that we're going to be using it's going to be a uh, interest payable and interest expense and we're going to use the register for one of those accounts and then use that to increase or decrease and then apply the other side to the other account there is a problem however in that we only have registers in quickbooks for permanent accounts or balance sheet accounts and uh, therefore we haven't yet set up the payable account for interest payable and the other side's an expense which doesn't have a register so in order to use this method we first need to create an account for the the interest payable to do that we're going to go to lists we're going to go to uh, chart of accounts and then at the bottom we're going to go to account and we're going to create a new account it's going to be an other current liability so we're going to select other current liability over here other current liability and we will then continue and we're going to name it interest payable so it's interest payable that's all we're going to need within this data field so we'll say save and close and then we can go back to our banking use register and it, it, it's open there directly because I was on the uh, interest payable account so if I'm going to close this out and close this out and once that's closed if I go back to banking use register then I'd have to find that in the drop down so just note that sometimes when you go to this register if you have certain fields open it will go to the register where the field is open and if you want to go somewhere else you'll have to close that field so we're gonna we're gonna select the account so we'll select the drop down and we're looking for interest payable the account we just set up so this is the ledger account for interest payable when we select OK and now that we have this we can say we're gonna increase or decrease this account and then the other side will just be the other side it's still a little bit confusing because we need to know uh, interest payable is a liability account and the liability is going up so the liability is going up because we're accruing interest so we're going to say it's as of the end of the month 228 and we're going to increase the interest payable by the amount of interest in accordance with the table which we're saying is 25 dollars i just switched to the amortization table here and then going back to QuickBooks increase of $25 and the other account then is going to be interest expense so we could select the drop down or we can just type in interest expense it's going to be an expense type account and that will be the other side of this and then we need to select enter for it to, to be entered and we, we might want to put adjusting or ADJ entry and to crude interest and enter for the note and then we can go back to our balance sheet and if we scroll back down then we should have our interest payable account here on the balance sheet showing a liability for that interest that is due for the fact that we've earned money or we've been using money for which we have not yet paid and therefore owe the rent or interest on it there's the amount there's the adjustment if we close this back out and we uh, then look at the other side it's going to be on the income statement go into the reports go into company and financial and profit and loss changing the dates to 0101 uh, 212 022821 scrolling down there's our interest expense here 
if we uh, double click on that, we see the 25, double clicking on that, there's our item. So there's the accrued interest expense. This journal entry will reduce net income and will increase the liability. What we're gonna do next time is we're actually gonna reverse this entry as of the first day of the next month. And this is only gonna happen for some of the adjusting journal entries, not all of them. And the reason this is we're gonna do this for some entries is uh, uh, process uh, reasoning, meaning if we're doing the adjusting entries as of the end of the month and we have that separate process than the data entry which is often done by a whole different department then often it's easier for us to do some of the data entry on more of a uh, cash basis or more of a different system than than to have to deal with our adjusting entries in other words if we go back to the balance sheet here when the actual payment actually happens for interest expense we would like it to be easy for the person actually writing the check at the end of the six month period to just say, I'm going to write a check crediting cash or decreasing cash for 5,152 and writing off the interest in accordance with this amortization table of 152 and then um, putting the other side to decrease the loan payable. What we don't want them to have to do is deal with our reversing entry. So what we're going to do is reverse our reversing entry as of the first day of the next time period. And therefore, when uh, this becomes due, they can just go according to the amortization table and not to be confused with this interest payable that we put on the books. What that does, if we go back to QuickBooks, is it makes this correct as of the end of the month. And then it's not exactly going to be correct once we do the adjusting entry in January 1st, but it will then be correct once uh, we make this payment, once this payment happens. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep on adjusting our uh, adjusting entries to, to make everything correct as of the end of the month. And then we're gonna try to make it as easy as possible for the bookkeeper not have to deal with uh, reversing our adjusting entry in their normal uh, bookkeeping process. And we'll see that as we go uh, with a couple of these journal entries. Some of them will have that reversing entry. Some of them will not. And our goal is to set up a system. So you want to think about a system that you can set up that will be workful and it'll do what you want it to do. It'll give us the information we want. It'll give us the regulatory needs we have to in order to report the financial statements. And it won't mess up our normal accounting process as we do the normal day-to-day -day journal entries.